Hey everybody, layered textures. Now a little bit earlier we did a video on the ideal of layering mental ray architectural shaders. In this case we're just looking at the ideal of using that same node, um, the layered texture node, just simply the layered textures. All right, so all I'm going to do here is make a polyplane, all right, and we're going to give it a new material. Let's say we will give it a Lambert. There's no reason not to. All right, we're going to bring in a couple of 2D texture nodes. Um, we'll bring in one node here, and we will bring in one node, and we'll put it right there. All righty. Uh, into this top one, we are going to just take a nice wood texture, which is the floor tiff. All right. And on this bottom one, we are going to bring in what's going to be our um, Atomic Butcher label, all right? So we've seen both of these before, and uh, this time we're just going to combine them. And using a layered texture node. Okie dokie. So what we'll do first is we'll take this um, wood texture and we'll dump it straight in there. We're going to put it into one of the inputs. Uh, put it into input zero. All right, so there's our layered texture node. As a matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll just call this wood. And then we'll take this and we'll put it into number two. And I'm going to call this logo. If I can spell. There you go. All right, all that really does is it makes it a little bit easier to see up here. We got the wood here, we got the logo here. Probably going to want the wood behind the logo, all right? So we'll take this, and we're just gonna pipe it into the Lambert, into the color section, all right? And if we look at over here, probably not exactly what we were thinking of, all right? Reason that is, is because uh, this fire, this layered texture node, um, although we have the wood on top, has no way of determining what the alpha is going to be. So you can see they're both here. So if I dial the alpha down to zero, there's the wood. If I dial this up, um, there's the alpha at one. All righty. Um, what we need to do is we need to take this texture and we're going to pipe it into the alpha channel of the layer texture node. All righty. When I do that, you get much more of what you would imagine you'd get. You get to see the wood in the background and the Atomic Butcher logo right on top of it. Um, situation I ran into the other day in class and uh, uh, puzzled me for a while was that uh, suppose that I wanted to blend this back or do something with it. Well, the alpha is actually locked because we've given it uh, a alpha channel from this 32-bit targa file. All right. So although uh, we can dial back other objects in here so I can dial back the wood and make the wood go away. Um, whatever we feed a an actual alpha channel uh, or a texture with an alpha channel into here, uh, we lose control of that. But we, the, we do have a way around it and I remembered and experimented and came up with it. So um, what I would do was, and it's something I just want to do first just because um, another thing that you often want to do is you may not want your label to be quite this big. Um, is that we're able to go into the 2D placement node for the texture and we can actually shrink that. So if we do something like, let's say, go up to the coverage, let's take this down to half its size, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Um, you can see where uh, it's much smaller over here. Uh, that may not be showing up over there, but let's do this and you can see where that's happening now. So we'll now switch over to this. Um, the next thing we probably want to do is, let's say we wanted to center it. Um, and I can do a 0.25, and if you watch there, what it's doing is it will now move the lower left corner of this pixel over on the X, 0.25, and this is the Y component, I can say 0.25. That'll actually move it to the middle. If I wanted this to be in the middle at the top, say 0.5 and now it's actually moving 0.5 units up to the top so that it's taking up half the space because we've made the coverage point 0.5 and we're actually just telling it where to place that lower pixel in this case 0.25 units this way and 0.5 units up 
uh, to keep it right in the middle, but I'm just going to say 0.25 and do something like that. So now we get it there. And you may notice once again that we're getting this horrific sort of graying effect. But if you recall, if we go into the logo texture, what's causing that, and you can see it right here, is this default color. And uh, whatever this default color is, is what we're going to get. So if you look at it over here, you can clearly see what the effect is. Uh, the way around that is that we want to put that into black, and that makes that all go away black being completely transparent. So now we have our logo texture exactly where we want it, right in the middle. Now getting back to how to fade it if we wanted to, what we can do is actually click on the file texture and we can go to the alpha gain, which is what I should have remembered in the first place. So if I wanted it to be half as transparent as it previously was, now you see we can blend this in. So if this was, let's say, a worn texture or something of that vein, um, you could do this and you'd get that uh, sort of worn texture look and you could move it around or do something like that. Um, but in our case, we'll just make it one so that we bring it all the way up. All right. Um, other thing that you can do is you can, of course, uh, bump up the default gain of this, not that it would look particularly realistic, but you could in this case go into the color gain and say 1.25 if you wanted to pump this up a little bit, and I'll just save that so you can look at the difference. All right, and you can see there where you're getting it a little bit brighter. All right, so that's a little bit brighter, a little bit more unrealistic, I think, along with that wood though. Um, so we'll take that color gain and we'll drop that back down to one. Okay, so that's the beginnings of it. What you could also do if you wanted to is, let's say, go into 2D textures. You could grab a noise node, okay? So maybe you wanted to make this whole thing a little bit dirtier. Um, we can grab this noise node and we can dump it right in here and pick a slot for it. And let's say we wanted to put it up front, all right? So now we have our noise here, our logo here, and our wood here, okay? Uh, initially, this is clearly not what you're probably expecting or wanting, which is something like this. Um, but we do have blend modes, very much like in Photoshop. So you might want to do something different, something in the vein of maybe a multiply. Okay, so maybe a multiply would give you a better effect. Yeah, that looks kind of dirty. Now, the noise texture here does not have an explicit alpha channel. So what we can do is we can actually get a hold of the slider here and dial this down a good bit. So let's say we wanted to dial this down to like a 0.3 or something like that. Um, then the difference is going to be a lot more subtle. So we get this and you can see where you can dial that down. And of course we have the capability to uh, change the, no the noise algorithm. We can change it from billowy to uh, purlin noise. Um, we can change the amplitude of the noise. We can make it just a little bit less pronounced, something like that. So now we've got much less pronounced, but it's sort of dirty. Uh, you may decide that you want the wood dirty and you don't want the dirt to ride over the actual label. In that case, all we need to do is grab the noise, middle click, and put it behind the label. So now the label's up front. Save that, hit the button, and there you go. Now the difference is the label itself isn't dirty. So the node actually works pretty well, and uh, despite my forgetting where things were, I think sometimes uh, the sheer volume of things that we go over, my brain explodes. Uh, but in the end, to all our benefit, uh, we remember what we're doing. The layered texture node, it's a lot of fun, play with that. It's a great way for you to achieve uh, interesting and much more complex looking looks for your renders and overall strengthen your work. Have a great day. Take care.